Good morning. Welcome to our Holy Cross parishioners, and a special welcome to all who are visiting. We are pleased to have you join in our Eucharistic celebration today as we celebrate God's presence in our lives on this, the first Sunday of Lent. Our readings today begin on page 1028 in the Red Worship Book. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Reeve. Father Reeve will be assisted by Deacon Joe Placius. Please join in the entrance hymn number 466, 40 Days and 40 Nights. Good morning, everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We come now to the very first Sunday of the period called Lent. As we think of our redemption and the price that Jesus paid for it, we repent of sin and ask God's forgiveness and mercy. Would you please join me in the front cover of the Red Missal, Penitential Act A, the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings, so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth. O Lord, make known to me, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who Covenant. <clears throat> Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O God. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, and he teaches the humble his way. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which few persons eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now. It is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, 
with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone, forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. My dear friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Now, before we have our formal homily, I want to give you a little theological lesson. We ask you to turn to the second page in the red book to see the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> in the Apostles' Creed, we have the line that says, he descended into hell. Now, in recent years, the translation read, he descended to the dead. And now with the new Roman Missal, we've gone back to the old translation, he descended into hell. Now, the problem with that translation is simply the fact that in English, we tend to use the word hell to describe a place of eternal punishment. This is not where Jesus went. If you look at the second reading today, it says, he went to preach to the spirits in prison. <clears throat> what did Jesus do between his death on the cross on Good Friday and his resurrection from the dead on Easter Sunday? His body remained in the tomb, but where was he? And this is what St. Peter explains to us today. He went to preach to the spirit in prison. People like Adam and Eve, Abraham and Sarah, Jacob and Rachel, all the prophets, all the great people of the Old Testament who could not enter heaven because redemption had not occurred until Jesus' death on the cross. And only with his passion, death, and resurrection were the gates of heaven open to all of us and to them. So in other words, the blessings of the Holy Cross were, in fact, retroactive, as well as reaching down to us to this very day. For as Peter says, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Now, as far as the gospel, I have a preference for the gospels in year A and C. Not so much this year in year B. 
because the accounts of the temptation in year A and C give us much more to talk about. We can analyze the three temptations from the point of asking what they teach us. Well, I don't have that luxury this year. However, be warned, you have a sneak preview of what will, how Lent will begin next year. So the question for us now is this, from the short account of Mark. Why did Jesus allow the Spirit to drive him into the desert to be tempted? Of the three persons in the Blessed Trinity, Jesus is the only one to actually experience what it means to be human. Although Jesus is like us in all things but sin, he does experience what it is at least to be attracted to things that are evil. He resists those things, of course, but he comes to know what it is to be tempted as we are. Mark does not tell us in this little gospel about what this experience was like, but it affected his whole ministry. After John had been arrested, Jesus immediately begins his public ministry, not in Jerusalem where it will end, but in the hill country of Galilee. Not among the educated and sophisticated in the great city, but among the country folk who become his followers in great numbers. He chooses his disciples from among the simple fishermen. As we look at the Gospels, we see Jesus getting frustrated with his disciples, and they with him. Just this past week, there was a Gospel about Jesus being in the boat, and the disciples forgot to bring bread. They had only one loaf. So Jesus comes out unexpectedly with this strange saying, beware the yeast of the Pharisees, beware the yeast of Herod. It would be like saying today, beware the yeast of the Democrats, beware the yeast of the Republicans, beware the yeast of Trump. What would that mean to us? Well, they thought that Jesus meant they had brought no bread. He says, why do you conclude that it is because you have no bread? Do do you not yet understand or comprehend? They just didn't get it. But at least the writers of scriptures were honest enough to tell us that because it has something to say to us. There is a lesson in this. The ashes on our forehead last Wednesday symbolized that the kingdom of God is not of this world. The ashes are from burned palms. On Palm Sunday, the people waved palms and shouted, Hosanna to the son of David, and strew the palms in the road as he went by. And they said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But a few days later, the same people were also shouting, shouting at him. What did they say? Crucify him, crucify him. Jesus was very disappointing to those who wanted Israel to become a kingdom more powerful even than the empire of Rome. But the kingdom of God is something that reigned in our hearts. The kingdom of God which we join at baptism leads us to live by the gospel. The season of Lent comes every year to remind us of that fact in a dramatic way as we prepare to celebrate once again during Holy Week the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. This is where the new and eternal covenant begins as Jesus described at the Last Supper. You hear those words at every Mass during the consecration of the wine. Today in our first reading, we have the ninth chapter of Genesis recalling God's words to Noah after the flood. In the sixth chapter of Genesis, before the flood, God uses the word covenant for the first time in the entire Bible. A covenant is not like a contract that can be made and broken. It is a solemn promise on the part of God to his people. 
God has responsibilities and so do the people. Yet because we are human, we have a tendency to fail in those responsibilities. But God is ever faithful. He never shuts the door on us. Through Jesus Christ, God always offers the opportunity for forgiveness. We are called to be God's people and to, to be responsible for one another and to be responsible to those who will come after us. My vocation is to be a priest. My job is to be pastor of this parish. As you know, I was succeeded at Clifton Springs, Shortsville, and Felt by a very new priest, Father Peter Van Lieshout. I wouldn't have wanted that kind of responsibility at the age of 30. So I gave him some words of advice. The priesthood is not a popularity contest. Jesus was very unpopular even with his followers at times. When I left Shortsville in 2007, my successor thanked me for all that I had done in those seven years. I did not know, of course, that I would be back again in six years. So I told him, think about your successor. How will he find this parish once you retire? Well, he left me a mess. And I said to Father Peter, you're not getting a mess. But think about your successor. What will he inherit from you? You have to educate people about responsibility. We priests come and go. Parishioners have to live with the effects of their own efforts or their lack of efforts. The secret of being a good pastor is simply this. If you educate people, they can never blame you for anything, nor even can the bishop. For our basic message is, day in and day out, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. May God bless you. This weekend, as a community, we celebrate the rite of sending. Father Gagné, these catechumens, whom I now present to you, are beginning their final period of preparation for the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. They have found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayer and example. Now they ask that they be recognized for their progress the progress they have made in their spiritual formation, and that they receive the assurance of our blessings and prayers as they go forth to the rite of election at Sacred Heart Cathedral this afternoon by Bishop Salvatore Matano. Catechumens, please stand. As one who knows them, I request that we confirm God's call to them to begin the final period of their initiation into the full sacramental life of this community and the church of which we are a part. As I call your name, please come forward. I call Tiffany Miller. I call Timothy Smith. So 
Well, we thank the candidates who stand along with these sponsors and godparents. I address myself, first of all, to you. To assure this community that these catechumens are ready to proceed to the right of election this afternoon, I ask you to testify on their behalf. Do you consider these catechumens ready to receive the sacraments of the church? We do. Thank you. You may now be seated. To our community gathered here, are you prepared to continue your support of these catechumens and thus ratifying their progress toward the Easter sacrament? We are. We are. And now, dear catechumens, I address you both. Your own sponsors and this entire community have spoken in your favor. This community gladly recommends you to Bishop Salvatore Mascana, who in the name of Christ will call you to the Easter sacrament. And by the way, Bishop Mascana will be with us at the Easter vigil, so he'll be the one baptizing you, not me. But we look forward to that. And so may God bring to completion the good work that he has begun in you in these last weeks. Thank you for all that you have done. <laughs> Father Reef will now lead us in the recitation of the Apostles' Creed. This form of the creed is what we all learned as children. It's the first portion of Our Lady's Rosary, and so we know it well. What do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God, our Father, you've heard our statement of faith, and we now offer for our catechumens, their sponsors, and this whole assembly here, we now offer our prayers of the faithful. That church leaders might guide and inspire us in our efforts to remain faithful to the gospel and turn away from sin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will touch the hearts and turn the minds of the leaders of nations along new paths of dialogue to resolve conflicts and injustice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessing on our catechumens and sponsors. As they gather at the cathedral this Sunday afternoon for the rite of election, that they sense the love and support of our community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the school in Parkland, Florida, and all other schools who have had to endure shootings, may the mercy of God comfort the grieving families and sustain the wounded in their healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we may be agents of Jesus' healing power to those most in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful who have died may rise with Christ to newness of life, especially Amanda Garino, and for Matthew O'Donnell, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and power, it is your will to establish everything in Christ and to draw us into his all-embracing love. 
guide these catechumens in the days and weeks ahead. Strengthen them in their vocation. Build them into the kingdom of your Son and send them with the spirit of promise. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The second collection today is for the Black, Native American, and Hispanic ministry. Please join in our offertory hymn, number 963, Our Father, We Have Wandered. <coughs>
brothers and sisters prayed, I sacrifice yours. May be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, to make these offerings. For with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lent and observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, he caught us to cast out the leaven of malice so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. <laughs>
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in death in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph and Mary, to the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Would anyone planning to take Holy Communion to a sick or shut in person please come up to the sanctuary at this time? Please remain in your seats for just a moment. Um, the word ecstasy is the only word I can think of when I hear Mozart's Ave Verum Corpus Christi as the choir has just sung. Let's give them a hand. Let us, let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity is also strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Operation Rice Bowl packets are available at the entrances of church. This simple yet powerful Lenten practice <clears throat> is a way to reach out to our brothers and sisters around the world. Our parish Lenten reflection books are still available in baskets at all entrances of the church. Please take one to assist your family on your Lenten journey. Mark your calendars to save the dates for four events in March. The celebration of the green, which will be held in our school this year, will be on Friday, March 9th. The diocesan day of penance and mercy will be on Wednesday, March 14th, from 12.30 to 7.30. Our annual St. Joseph's table in our parish center will be on Sunday, March 18th, from 1 to 3. 
and the Eastern Greece Shalat Lenten Retreat will be on March 18th through 20th. Please see our bulletin or website at holycrossrochester.org for these and all parish activities. There will be a coffee hour after Mass in the parish center, and our recessional hymn will be number 461, Lord, who throughout these 40 days. Please bow your heads and ask for God's blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people so that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue may be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. The Lord, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us walk to love and serve the Lord by serving one another. Thanks be to God.